So one of the things that I get asked often by people who are new to leadership, who are new to the leadership positions is, how can I become a great leader? Now, some people don't flat out say it that way. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's what we're all wondering when we find ourselves in a new leadership position. Okay, how can I be the best leader in this situation? How can I be the best leader? <laughs> and I want to talk to you today about that by way of <laughs> telling you what I would tell my previous self if I could go back in time and debunk some of the myths that I believed about leadership if I could travel backwards. So let's start with myth number one, that I have to have all the right answers as a leader. Eh, wrong. <laughs> leaders do not have to have all the right answers. The only thing leaders really need to be able to do is to figure out how to find the right answers. And when we say right answers, um, oftentimes we believe that there is only one right answer. I also don't think that's true anymore. Matter of fact, I know that that's not true because a lot of times the right answer or the best solution, um, there might be more than one great solution, to be honest. And the only way that we figure out what that solution to our problems is or our challenges are is to experiment, really, to make a decision. Let's pick one. Let's pick one of these ideas and let's move forward and let's try them out and see what happens, which leads to myth number two. Failure is not an option. Eh, <laughs> that's not right either. And I do mean that actually isn't right. Oh, one of the things that... um. Now, maybe you don't struggle with this, but I did, and I know a lot of other people do as well. As leaders, we believe that, well, failure is not an option. And um, gosh, not only is that not helpful thinking, it's actually not even true. And here's what I mean by that. Um, I'm not actually sure what failure means, to be honest. So if you outside of um, like maybe a sports team, like, you know, a football match, uh, one team wins, one team loses, or they tie, but you know. Um, so if you have a great definition of failure, can you drop it in the comments below? I, I'm really curious because here's what I've learned about um, outcomes not turning out the way that we imagined that they would. Well, that's just it. Things just didn't turn out the way that they imagined that we imagined that they would. That isn't failure, though, right? Like that's just learning opportunities. Can the learning opportunities be painful? Absolutely, they can be really painful. Matter of fact, we can hurt others by things, unintended consequences happening of decisions that we make, and those stick with us for sure. That doesn't always mean we failed. So when I think of failures, I simply think of massive learning opportunities for us to do things differently and perhaps never like that again. Am I right? <laughs> um, so in that way, like failure, failures are okay in the sense that they're simply learning opportunities. They're opportunities for us to grow and to learn and um, and to improve, whether personally as an individual or, um, or as a team, right? Like I, I did not complete my first Ironman. Now, does that make me a failure? No, it makes me a person who did not complete her first Ironman. Um, lots of growth, lots of learning opportunities. Was I super disappointed? Yes, very disappointed but it doesn't make me a failure. And it doesn't make my attempt at trying an Ironman failed, right? Like I just didn't, I didn't finish. Um, and then myth number three, now maybe this isn't true of you, but this absolutely has been true of me um, and for sure was true of me when I first started in leadership, that I have to have everything worked out before I engage anyone else in the process. 
eh, that is the biggest myth and lie that somebody has fed us over time about leadership and what it means to be a, a great leader, what it means to be an effective leader. Because here's the deal. The best ideas, the, um, the best ways forward come out of having a group of diverse people at a table where there are people with different skills, different expertise, different passions, different experiences, different backgrounds, all sitting around the table and sharing all that it is that, that we can bring to the table, right? Like when, when everyone at the table is able to show up as themselves, as their authentic selves and bring all that they are to the table and allow their authentic selves to speak into um to speak into the reality of what's going on so say you're facing a challenge right now um, and you're just really not sure what the best way forward is the absolute best thing to do is to pull people gather people around the table um gather a diverse set of voices around the table and have everyone speak into it and see what ideas emerge because um, each of us comes to the table with kind of a, a set of blinders on, right? Like I bring my background, my experience, my knowledge, um, my identity, and um, and that's going to be utterly different from the person sitting here, the person sitting here, the person sitting here, the person sitting here. And when we all get to bring our best selves to the table and really look at a challenge for what it is and speak into it and come up with some ideas about how we might go about that challenge. That is a million, and I do mean million, a million times better than me, leader, thinking that I have to come up with the best solution possible before I involve anyone else in the process. Um, <laughs> that is when we have huge misses. When we approach leadership like that, we have huge misses. There are gaping holes um, in, in our ideas. Like, let's face it, we might have some great ideas within us. And when we empower others to share their voices and bring their authentic selves to the table, everyone else does too, right? Like, Everyone has great ideas. And when those great ideas get to sit together at the table and we get to brainstorm freely without judgment, um, that's when some of the best ideas are formed. And um, and it, it, it honestly is just the biggest lie that as leaders, we, we, we by ourselves in our office at the, at our computer behind, you know, behind our desk have to come up with the best ideas before we engage anyone else's thoughts. No, like as leaders, we get to empower everyone to bring themselves to the table so that we get to come up with the best ideas. Okay. And so, um, Gosh, if I could go back and tell myself even just those three things and debunk those three myths of leadership, oh, a lot of pain and anguish and humiliation would have been saved. Alas, here we are and here I am. And, um, and to be honest, like this is why I became a leadership consultant. And this is why I love working with leaders and pastors and churches is because I love empowering leaders to become the most effective leaders that they can possibly be serving the people that they work with, serving their teams, serving their churches, their organizations, their companies, so that we can leave a lasting impact in this world that honestly is crying out, crying out for effective leaders. And if this last 13 months hasn't informed us of that, then I don't know what will. <laughs> In fact, I am so passionate about leadership that I went and got my doctorate of strategic leadership because I genuinely um, didn't want to just learn about leadership from my own experiences. Granted, they have been very informative in my life and helped me become a better leader. Um, but I actually wanted to 
really spend some time, years, um, studying what it means to become, to be an effective leader through the lens of, of scripture and how Jesus informs leadership as well as leadership best practices. And this is the reason that I became a leadership consultant to get you the leadership answers that you are looking for so that you can become the most effective leader in your sphere of influence so that you can leave a lasting impact. Now, if you are overwhelmed as a leader right now and you are trying to figure out how to get more done in less time in actually a real way, <laughs> then I'm going to link below to my video on how to get more done in less time in a non-gimmicky way, of course, because it is actually impossible to add more hours to our day but there is a strategic way that we can actually get more done in less time. And hint, it involves other people. So check that video out. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.